The Duchess of Sussex has been warned not to lecture South Africans about human rights issues like cultural colonials when she visits on a royal tour. Meghan and Harry leave later this month for the visit to the south of the continent. While Harry travels to countries including Angola, Malawi, and Botswana, Meghan will stay in South Africa with four-month-old son Archie. It is expected that the couple will both speak out on causes including women's rights. Meghan, 38, in particular has given speeches around the world on gender equality and votes for women and has campaigned on behalf of female sex workers. She devoted a whole issue of Vogue magazine to empowering women when she was asked to be a guest editor. Meghan is in America at the moment, having flown out to see close friend Serena Williams play in last night's final of the US Open tennis tournament. South African campaigners say that they welcome the Duchess's arrival, but they urge her not to trample on their sensitivities. Professor Amanda Guz of Stellenbosch University encouraged Meghan to speak up for women. She said, this is a very appropriate moment because we had our women's parliament yesterday with women MPs and civil society looking at the issue of gender-based violence. South Africa has the highest incidence of rape in the world. But Professor Guz warned, it would be helpful for her to become involved but it has to be done with care and sensitivity. One way to really upset South Africans is when the global north comes to lecture us about what we are doing wrong and how much better it could be if we were more like them. She has to link the problem to the global condition and if she does this, it could be a very helpful way of raising the subject of very high levels of gender-based violence which the women of South Africa have to live with day by day. President Cyril Ramaphosa has pledged to tackle gender violence in a country where five times as many women are murdered than the global average. UN figures reveal one of the highest incidences of rape in the world, including corrective rape where lesbians are forced to become heterosexual. Activist Fatima Shabadi N, of the Faith Foundation, welcomed Meghan's input but warned, she should first talk to local people and local groups about what they think. Of course her attention can help, there is a lot of interest in what she says and thinks. But she can't come here and just give her opinions off the cuff. People resent that sort of cultural colonialism. She should consult with people who live these experiences, in private if that's necessary. We welcome her if she approaches us respectfully, but we don't want to be told what to do by anyone. Many African countries are highly sensitive to direct or implied criticism from former colonial powers like Britain. Documentary maker Stacey Dooley, 32, was accused of playing the white savior after she was filmed cuddling a Ugandan boy in clip for comic relief. Harry, 34, will continue some of his mother Princess Diana's work on landmines and HIV. One former palace aide explained, there is no doubting that Harry really cares about Africa's social problems and wildlife problems. But this is one part of the world where it is paramount that the Duke and Duchess are humble and not in the least showbiz. Meanwhile, Meghan joined a yoga class to get over her jet lag shortly after arriving in New York on Friday. The Duchess, whose mother Doria Ragland, 63, is a yoga instructor in Los Angeles, joined up to 60 people at the Moto Yoga Center. A source said, she has been going to Moto Yoga for many years and tries to do so whenever she is in New York. It was the perfect remedy for jet lag. There were lots of sweet, knowing smiles among the respectful patrons. The Duchess took a hot yoga class which normally costs 19 pounds. She is thought to have kept up her regular workouts following the birth of Archie earlier this year. Meghan Markle has revealed that the key point of their upcoming Africa tour will be for the United Kingdom. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex will head to Africa for a 10-day tour on September 23. While there, the pair will travel to South Africa, Angola, Malawi, and Botswana. In a statement released by Buckingham Palace, the Duke and Duchess revealed that their trip will illustrate a new dawn on the UK-Africa partnership. The statement read, this will be their Royal Highness's first official tour as a family. Not only will this visit serve as an opportunity for the Duke and Duchess to highlight many of the causes they have been in involved with for many years, it will also demonstrate a modern UK-Africa partnership in action. The trip Africa will be the pair's first trip abroad since their summer excursions to Nice and Ibiza over the summer.
Although Prince Harry has been seen by the public while conducting royal duty, Meghan has been on maternity leave. The trip, therefore, will be one of the few occasions we have seen the Duchess and many royal fans will be hoping to also catch a glimpse of their son, Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor. Meghan, a prominent women's rights activist, will also spend time with powerful female figures during their tour. The Duchess is particularly looking forward to the opportunity to learn from inspirational women in the region according to a royal statement. The statement added, as patron of the Association of Commonwealth Universities, Her Royal Highness will meet female entrepreneurs, academics, and community leaders, and join discussions with South African young women about the future of their countries. While the visit will be an inspirational one for the Duchess, for Harry, the visit to Africa will also be a particularly significant and poignant journey. Harry will retrace the legacy of his mother, Princess Diana. Diana famously walked through a cleared minefield in Angola in 1997 just months before her tragic death in Paris. The statement added, in a particularly significant and poignant journey, the Duke of Sussex will have the opportunity to return to Angola to see firsthand the legacy of his mother the late Diana, Princess of Wales, whose visit to Huambo in 1997 helped raise awareness of the threat posed by landmines to communities and livelihoods. The work of the late princess, and commitment to this issue changed global opinion. Now, more than two decades later, humanitarian demining work continues and the Angolan government has made a significant financial commitment to clearing landmines from another large area important for the conservation of Angola's unique ecosystem. The Duke will launch this new project, operated by the Halo Trust, and will also visit Huambo to see how, what was once a dangerous area, has developed into a thriving community after being cleared of mines. There he will meet the men and women who have undertaken the dangerous and vital work of mine clearing and visit the orthopedic center that is treating mine victims. Before their trip to Africa, Meghan did make an appearance to see friend and tennis icon, Serena William play in the US Open final. Traveling to New York, Meghan watched as Serena lost the US Open final to Bianca Andreescu. In the summer, Meghan had also visited Wimbledon to watch her Serena play. Unfortunately for the pair, Serena was defeated by Simona Halep in the final.